Uh, I'd, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Tra Tang Tran, who is our principal architect at the Andes, and he's going to present uh, his final uh, episode in this his four part series on RISV uh, extensions. Tang? Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Tang Tran, and and the weapon, uh, and this is the last weapon of the sorry, hold on one second here. And we'll go to the examples and also the uh, uh, performance of the ND vector processor. So I have one announcement to make that the RISC-V vector extension specs have gone public review last week for 45 days. And if there's no major change, it will be ratified by November, then it will be officially released uh, vector specs. And as always, we are, um, we are always keep up with the, the latest revision of the uh, risk five vector extension. Okay. Okay, let's start. Okay, so today um, we will go to two examples. One is the matrix multiplication, and the other one is low with the uh, a uh, floating point multiply and accumulate. And then we would go through uh, some of the uh, detailed uh, performance of the NX27V. Uh, okay. And so this is the slide I show up on every uh, webinar that showed, you know, abbreviation that we use in the design. And the two important one is the V length is the vector reser length in bits and the L mode is the, the reser grouping. Okay, let's start with the, the code. Okay, so this is the matrix multiplication. This is uh, actually one of the issue or one of the example that posts in the RVV extension uh, work group. And so the uh, the uh, so we have a basically a matrix multiplication and it a floating point, and the multiplication is assumed to be thirty two bit, so it's a single precision uh, matrix multiplication, and so the assumption is that uh, there would be not one but several set of matrix multiplication. And so the cow here, you know, can be set to say a hundred set of matrix multiplication or whatever the number the uh, uh, application would require. And so there are two way of do uh, of, uh, in vector process. There are two way of process this uh, matrix multiplication. Uh, one is you the dry low instruction. And the other one use a unit law instruction. I will go to the example and so the difference between the two um, uh, law type of law instruction type. And so the first one, if you, we're looking at the code, right? The matrix multiplication, there are basically 22 uh, elements in the matrix. Uh, we have nine for the uh, B matrix, six for the A matrix and six for the uh, result. And if you look at the number of, of vector reser that going to be used for the matrix, that basically would be 22. And 22 is less than 32. So we can actually process the whole matrix multiplication uh, in uh, uh, together. And so, so we're going to use 22 vector reser in this case. And so because each vector raster can hold 16 elements, so we basically, we can load 16 set of matrix, uh, matrices uh, and operate them in parallel. And so the, you know, this multiplication here, I translate into uh, this table. 
uh, so the one on the left here will translate into this table, and we will start with the uh, uh, with the yellow uh, multiplication first, and then do the accumulate and accumulate to get the result. Okay, and so the basic function is basically to do the multiplication, uh, the f mark and f mark to basically generate the the result. And so, so uh, because we had a VLAN defined in 12 bit and the element width is 32, so there are 16 elements. And so, as I said before, we have 16 set of matrices can be done processed in parallel. And so there would be six uh, multiplication followed by 12 um, um, uh, VF mark. Okay, and so the assumption is that the 16 matrix are continuous in memory. So you have all the uh, A matrix are consecutive to each other. And so if we want to load the data for the 16 matrix, then basically the first element, uh, basically if you want to load A0 first, then the, the A0 for the 16 matrix would be basically uh, it will be a stride low, basically based on the distance from one, from the first matrix to the second uh, matrix. And so the, the distance will be six. And so we basically, we will load the data for the uh, A matrix. The second one is the B matrix. The distance will be nine and six, okay? And so if you look at the, the this is a stride, low of 32 bit. Uh, so it will be going to A0. And so 16 A0 element of 16 matrix will be low into uh, V10. And then we increment the address to go to A1 and perform. So X5, the base address, and X2 is the next element in the uh, matrix. So we basically, we low 16, uh, uh, matrices for A uh, into the processor with the stride uh, of, of six based on from one element to the next one. And then we do the same thing with the B. And then by the end, we basically, we store the data back into uh, memory. Okay. And so because that's how the data gets structured in memory uh, in order to do the, the uh, low. It basically, we, we will have to load a 12 uh, cache line to basically to get the, the data. And it had to be done uh, six times in order to get the, the uh, uh, so the total number of cycle, assume you know, six cycle load and then Basically, these are the total cycle that we need to do the low and store. And the flow and point multiplication will be 18 uh, clock cycle. And then the total number of cycle is basically a uh, 297 cycle to do the, uh, the matrix multiplication for 16 sets. So the, to the, the basically, uh, you can look at at, at a uh, total, total cycle for the matrix multiplication is about 19 clock cycle, okay? And we only use 21 raster out of 32. So the efficiency is 66%. And the static instruction in the loop would be 62. And so, so uh, if you look at it, it's 16x the performance in comparison with the scalar code, okay? Another way of doing the matrix multiplication is look at is using the unit law, right? Because the unit law is much more efficient in comparison to the stride law, okay? And so in this case, uh, we look at the, the uh, we have 16 elements. So if you look at Elmo equal four, then 
it equivalent to 64 element and Elmo equal A, it means equal to 128 element. And so if you look at uh, the C matrix and the A matrix, then, then, then because we have 64 element, then we can actually do 10 set of the, uh, for 64 element, we can do the 10 set that, uh, of the uh, C and the A matrix, and it will fit into the uh, factor reservoir with the Elmo equal four, the 64 element. But for the B matrix, it's 90, right? 10 set of the nine element be 90, and we fit into the vector raster with the Elmo equal eight. And so what we're going to do is load the data in using the unit law, which is more efficient. And then we shuffle for the element that using the permute instruction. And one other thing is we're taking advantage of the ELMO that we did not take in advantage with the stride law. Okay. And so the process is now uh, we do the, uh, the uh, uh, factor law, and we basically we load ten uh, set of the uh, matrix, right? And so we load ninety element uh, into the vector processor, and then uh, we have to to change the uh, VL, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, vector uh, application vector length from ninety to sixty. Because when we load, we, we need to, to load 90, but when we operate, we only need to operate on 60. And so we can use the VR gather instruction and V slide uh, up and V gather instruction basically to, to shuffle the, the uh, element that we load into the same format that we see for the B, right? And so we basically, we reshuffle it into B uh, using the gather element into the yellow, the blue, and the white. And similarly, uh, uh, now we change the elbow to four, so we can load the 60 element, right? And then uh, we can use the, uh, again, using the VR gather instruction, to basically to put the element into the yellow, the blue, and the white, according to this uh, gather here, gather and we are gather to basically to um, permute instruction, to put the instruction into the correct uh, raster. And after we put the, the element into the correct raster, then we can do the multiplication, right? And then we do the second set and and then do the uh, um, VF mark to, to basically to add with the previous. And then, so on the last VF mark, we had a result. And after we get the result, then we store, and this is a unit store to put the data into the, uh, back into the memory, okay. So this is the graphical view of how it worked. So basically you take the 90 element, you load the data into uh, a vector raster. And then after that, we do the, uh, the VR gather, we slide up, we do VR gather and VR gather. So basically we set up uh, four set of the raster and then we go to the A element, we load in and basically we do the VR gather to basically set up the uh, next set of the A and then perform the uh, 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 multiplication and VF mark. And we, we, after we get the result, then we basically write back uh, to the memory. So there's an A raster that we basically we use for index because the index is to represent uh, this number right here of how we want the that for the VR gather to shuffle the data to the correct places uh, for this vector raster. Okay, and so in comparison, the the low install uh, actually 
much more effective in terms of loading the data. And so it would take 28 clock cycle to basically for the memory operation uh, because the, the, to do the memory operation uh, because the data doesn't need to have strike. So, so all the load will be happening in one clock cycle. And so uh, after that, uh, the VR gather for the uh, A matrix and VR gather for the B matrix to be additional clock cycle. The multiplication is 12. So the total now is 103 for 10 sets. And so for comparison, it basically is roughly 19 cycle using the unit low in comparison to the 19 uh, cycle that we use for the strike low um, type. And the number of static instruction in the loop is also fewer in comparison. And so basically, and, and here it's only 10 sets. So everything had to be divided by 10. In the other case, everything divided by 16 because we can do 16 uh, matrix at a time. And so in comparison, that is still 2.7 in comparison to four. And if you look at how it used the efficiencies is much better that we use 90% of the vector raster. And so, so accessing the memory is also more effective because we're accessing 28 instead of 41 cast line. And okay, so how does it work when we have a, a much larger matrix? So the example here, that I have a three by six times three by six, right? Six by three times three, three by six. And so we take 18 vector raster and then 36. So, so the total number of vector raster that we need is 72. And of course we don't have 72 vector raster. We only had 32. And so it's not possible to do uh, the whole matrix multiplication as we did when we have a smaller matrix. And so in this example, we can load the B matrix and go from B0 to B17. And then we can do uh, the first row of the A matrix, do the multiplication to generate the result for C. And then when we finish with that, then we go to the next row of the A matrix and continue to finish. So it would be, again, it would be um, 16 uh, matrix, uh, 16 set of matrices uh, done at one time, but we produce a result for, for, um, uh, for C, for one row of the C at a time. And so we take a uh, more cycle to do that, okay? And when you go to the unit law, uh, we look at the number of tall raster and it turned out that we can only do one set of matrix per loop iteration. And, and it's similar method that we load the 18 element and then shuffle to the uh, UV we are gathered to set up three uh, decent and then uh, for the A matrix and then do multiplication and write back the result. And, but we do only one matrix at a time. And notice that the, the result is, um, uh, we actually, we had to use L more equal four, which is, uh, has 64 element, right? And, but we only need 36 elements. So this is a very inefficient. Uh, well, because uh, if we have a larger matrix, it's actually fit in better than the three, than the six by six. For example, if we have eight by eight, then it would fit in here perfectly. But in this case, we have six by six matrix. And so the efficiency is going down depending on the size. 
but I'm just using this as an illustration, okay? And so in comparison, the in terms of the uh, performance, right, for the unit load, the number of instruction per loop is significantly less. And then total number of cycle uh, per matrix is, is only 22 in comparison to uh, 79. So in comparison, the unit low always have a better performance. But in this case, the uh, efficiency of the reset uses is a lot less in comparison. Okay, now come to the second example. Uh, they are issued uh, 362. Um, and in this case, we have a loop uploading the data and then do the app mark, uh, basically to accumulate the, the, uh, the, the data. And so the, this code basically started when we were in the RVV 0.8. And so the instruction here, the uh, factor low byte, uh, it basically low eight, uh, eight bit of data, and then it will perform both the loading and the extent and, um, and extension at the same time. So you load the data in and extension to 32 bit um, at one time. So it's a single instruction to do that. And so the, the performance is required, this is per loop and what, we, and what the requirement is that we want to basically uh, execute one instruction per clock cycle. So, but what happened if you look at the, uh, the ELMO, when ELMO equal eight, the element width is actually 4,000 nice bit. So the VF Mac here is basically it a a um, multi the um, the uh, multiply accumulate for basically for 128 element uh, of 32 bit. So in in the loop we actually need to perform this number of bit in terms of multi uh, multiplication every clock cycle. So it's based on, this is a critical factor that we had to do uh, 4,000 nice bit of multiplication, well, 128 element of 32 bit uh, per clock cycle, okay? And so we can structure that, so that basically uh, you can load, so this is only for the vector processor, so it show only the vector instruction so you can do the vector load. And after we done the vector load, then we can start the, the add, the, uh, uh, the add function, the integer add function, and then do the conversion from integer to flow and point, and then do the, the uh, VF back. And so this show the chaining of the instruction. And so basically the v, uh, VF back is fully pipeline that it will be um, one VF Mac operate per clock cycle. And so there will be eight VF Mac uh, operation within the loop, right? So, um, so in terms of the uh, arithmetic instruction, we actually, we had 24 micro of the V add we have T and we have Mac. And so it performs per clock cycle. And the VF Mac is often uh, counted at two uh, operation. And so if we, we take that and we calculate at one gigahertz, it is actually uh, 48 gigaflop for the single pre precision. And then if you can you know, calculate that, it would be uh, 96 uh, gigaflop for the uh, um, half precision uh, operation. And uh, sometime we may have to uh, 
in the actual implementation, we may have to unroll the loop twice in order to pipe, uh, pipeline the vector load instruction. And, and definitely, if we decide the VLAN of um, 1K bit, uh, we can actually improve the performance of the loop. So uh, on RVV 0.9, and it's also in the current the vector extension ISA 1.0, the uh, uh, that single instruction, the VLB instruction, is broken into two instructions, the low A bit and then the extension. And so it will become, so these two instruction will actually a single instruction in RVV 0.8, but in RVV 0.9 and also the later version, it become uh, two instruction, and it basically do the same thing, but it will load the A bit element and then would we'll extend it to thirty two bit, and then after that uh, everything else is the same. And so if we look at the, uh, a tie loop, right, and it will A instruction and now become nine, the performance is degraded by twelve and a half percent. And so for this reason, Andy provide both the custom low instruction and also, uh, that based on the RVV 0.8, as well as the uh, instruction according to the latest uh, RVV ISA specs. Okay. So that is done with the example. Okay. Now we go to some introduction. So when we decide the uh, vector processor, uh, we make sure that it configurability going from 128 to find a 12 bit. And so it's scalable to be next generation power and area. Uh, so we use some innovative design to make sure that keep the low power and area and the performance is actually an hour of order execution. And simplicity is actually the most critical uh, part of the design. Uh, it actually reduces the verification time. And so uh, we have the design from start to finish in nine months. So yes, it uh, had to be uh, had to had to be uh, very simple to implement. And yes, I like this code. Uh, so you can read about that. So we start with the uh, efficient uh, scalar unit. So this is already done. And then we couple the uh, app order VPU. And so the, the VPU, it basically can do uh, integer 8 to 64, 16 to 64. These are the standard. Uh, we also have the extension to be flow 16 and integer 4. And so, so the RVV instruction actually start after the retire state. And so um, functional unit are basically parallel, pipeline, and chainable. Okay. And the memory bus is also uh, go from 128 to final 12 bit. The L1 cache is actually can be configured from 32 K by to find it in 12 K by. And so there's an important thing here is the ACE, the streaming port that we uh, load and store data. And so basically, uh, if you look at the uh, configuration, if we have the scalar, if we have the vector processor, and there's a, say, a memory in this, a smart memory, well, uh, then we can actually uh, use an ACE instruction to program and set up the external memory, and then uh, after that, the data can be streaming between the VPU and the external memory. And so it's a tightly coupled uh, 
with the uh, with the the hardware between the memory, and so it provides a lot of uh, fast and flexible data pre and uh, post processing. Okay, so compared to the uh, straight code, so there's a big improvement in terms of the speed up from 23x to 81x. Okay. And so there's a standard tool, uh, cycle simulator, compiler, assembler, debugger. And so some of the advanced tool, we also support that. And in terms of performance number, so there are different version of the VLAN and the SIMD. And so, so we also support the VLAN of 512 to the SIMD of 256 bit. Um, and so this is the worst case in seven nanometers is greater than 1.2 gigahertz. Uh, I think in the five nanometer, this frequency also go up to uh, uh, 1.7 gigahertz, the, uh, the gate count depend on width configuration from 1.6 to 2.6 uh, million gates, okay? The architecture, when we compare to the, uh, the arm uh, neon, there's a big difference here is that chaining is not applicable in NEON, and that will probably give us the biggest performance advantage. Uh, the other thing is, you know, basically the vector length in SIMD is significantly bigger, larger than in comparison to the NEON and the helium. In uh, addition, uh, the, the ELMO is also the important factor here. It's, it's not supported to in the helium. And so when, when the helium say in that, uh, it has chaining possible. The chaining is possible because the V length is twice the width of the SIMD. And so the chaining is basically only, only two. Uh, in comparison to the ND vector processor where we support the ELMO equal eight. So the chaining it basically can be up to eight uh, vector uh, res instruction, eight vector micro op in comparison to the helium, basically the maximum only two. So the chaining is also yes, but it is limited. And that's where the performance is coming from in comparison beside the, the the, the vector length. So uh, we also compared to the A64FX. It was presented in hot chip 2018. And so in the same technology, uh, so these are the number reported from hot chip, right? And so uh, we can, you know, on the average, we can do like 96 uh, gigaflop. And so the peak performance is also uh, 320. And so in the hot chip that reported the configuration is 48 uh, vector processor. And so if we scale our processor to 48, then the uh, teraflop will be 4.6 and the memory bandwidth is a lot higher because uh, we also have the uh, streaming data port. So development tool, uh, there's a, a near cycle accuracy simulator, compiler, examiner debugger, and there's also the AI compiler support to LLVM. So any uh, clarity, also a, a visualizer and analyzer, and it can be used for uh, hardware software uh, development. And so you can see more in the next slide. Uh, uh, basically, this is the uh, clarity, and this is one of the 
big thing is that you can look at the uh, pipeline of the instruction and see what happened and where are the bubble and where the store. And so there's a, an overall view of the in, uh, instruction for the whole uh, ben benchmark. And so in some case, if you want to, to uh, see the pipeline viewer, you can double click to basically to have this view and you can track now why we have a low performance or why we have the, the uh, what caused us to have a, a, a better performance, what caused us to have a um, delay in the, I mean, in the low performance. So you can up, double click view and profile go back and correct the code and all that. So this is a actually a very powerful tool to uh, view the uh, vector processor pipeline. And okay, in summary, uh, we are the first commercial risk five vector processor uh, with the VLAN from 512 to 128 bit. And we announced the vector processor actually about two years ago in December 2019. Uh, well, we had at least five customer projects uh, and high performance in HPC and AI application. And so it's flexible and it can enable a wide range of application from um, AI to IoT. And Andy Clarity, again, is a performance optimization. Uh, can be viewed to basically to optimize the performance. And so uh, we work with customer uh, using the uh, AMD custom extension to provide proprietary hardware acceleration, marketing comparative. So, you know, you can have the same factor processor, but you can add your custom instruction to for your all performance or or in some case, your application that requires some improvement. Uh, you can also add the hardware accelerator to the design. Uh, so we, our design is actually pretty unique that it's uh, provide a very simple way of adding the hardware acceleration, uh, including for both the vector processor as well as the CPU. Uh, so Andy will continue to expand the vector product family to make the requirements from S2 cloud applications. And so that's it. That's the last uh, webinar of the series. And thank you everyone for attending. So we, if we have some time to answer question. Okay. I don't see any questions in the open area. Is there anyone online that wants to ask a question? So there were some uh, questions that were sent in uh, before. Okay. Um, can, can you uh, access to that question? It, it in the panel list. Okay, so how feasible, easy can RISC-V be extended to support novel memory architectures. Okay. For example, recent IBM um, Z virtual L2, L3 cache. So um, I don't know exactly what the IBM virtual L2, L3 cache is, uh, but uh, in our design, we actually, we do have the level two cache as uh, we connected. And we also have, you know, as I explained earlier, we have the, the uh, uh, stream import to go to um, a uh, local vector memory. And we can set up that local vector memory in any way that you want to. Um, you, you can set up DMA, you can set up circular buffer or any kind of memory that we, you can support. And in addition, beside the catchable memory and also the, and the uh, local vector memory, 
we also uh, support the non-cacheable uh, memory. And so the non-cacheable uh, memory, it actually uh, can be in any data that come from external, outside of the CPU and you know, vector processor, but it can be in any format that you that you want. And so, <clears throat> and so uh, at any one point, uh, the vector processor can actually support uh, three different types of uh, upload data and three different types of store data uh, to either catchable, non catchable, or the local vector memory. So yeah, I think we. Uh, we can set it up to support basically any type of uh, uh, vector memory that that you want to design. We have a couple of questions that came in on the Q and A uh, line. Uh, Arm has rolled out SME after SVE. Any plans for RISC Five to have similar extension? So the the, the uh, the risk by vector processor is already done. It's being ratified right now. So uh, I do not know what is the uh, um, SMEs. I mean, what is the uh, the difference between the uh, SMEs and SVE? So I don't know what is the SME. So I probably would have to take a, a, a look at. But uh, but um, if there's a, any advantage. Uh, with the SME, uh, we probably can make a suggestion uh, to the RVV uh, work group. It's been ratified, but it basically been reviewed by the public. And so, if you know, if there's some good feature in the SME, uh, we can make a suggestion to add it into the RVV before it being ratified. And so. Yeah, yeah. If there is anything good, we can we can do that. Next question: Are there any simulation board development kits available for um, NX twenty seven V? Oh well, uh, so that is the uh, application question. So Jonas or Emerson, do you know? Hubert. Hubert is online. Hubert, can you answer that? No? Yeah, so uh, I can uh, answer that question. So we do have a uh, FPGA board farm that in-house that uh, people can have remote access to the uh, 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 evaluation kit uh, for NX27B. Is that available on board farm, Emerson? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So just to explain, Board Farm is an online resource where you can upload your design, run it on our FPGA board online, and then get the results. So you don't have to buy the home. You don't have to go out and buy the FPGA. Okay. Okay, so we had two other questions that came in from the um, uh, online in advance of the uh, conference. It, one is virtualization and vector compute and V risk V. What is that? Uh, any, any comments on that? Uh, um, can you repeat the question again, sir? Well, it's just a statement that says virtualization and vector compute in risk V. Is that, uh, do, I, mean, I'm, I guess the question is, is virtualization and vector compute Available in RISC five. So, uh, so virtualization is basically going to the CPU. So, as long as the CPU supported the uh, the uh, TLB, then yeah, the data can be uh, can can be um, uh, virtualized uh, based on that. So, uh, so our CPU actually support the factor of. Uh, virtualization or TLB, uh, but currently, uh, I don't think any of the customer actually using that. Okay. One last question, is multi-core design with all processors need a vector engine with the same configuration? So, so there's no restriction 
Uh, so say if you have 64 core and uh, half of them want to use a 512 bit uh, VLAN and the other half want to use 128 bit VLAN, there's no restriction at all. Uh, yeah, uh, you can uh, you can use in in uh, any configuration. So uh, that you want with the vector processor and the CPU, uh, you might require two different license uh, for different vector length, but but there's no restriction in terms of the uh, NX twenty seven V itself. So yeah, it, it's feasible. Okay. All right. That's all the questions we have in the queue. Thank right. you, Tad. That was a great presentation. And uh, thank you in the audience for joining us. If you have any further questions, just email us and uh, uh, america at andystech.com and we'll, we'll make sure we get your answers back. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.